a large but often very overlooked part of product backlog refinement is forecasting and being able to answer that age old question of when will it be done? And that is what we're going to talk about right now is forecasting using something called the cone of uncertainty, which if you live in any tropical area or many parts of the US, you will have seen those hurricane and, and tropical weather forecasting maps and they are using the same concept. That is to say, even when life is on the line, this stuff kind of works. So it probably will work for our software and hardware as well. So using forecasting and the cone of uncertainty, my recommendation is use throughput. You may have heard of or used velocity before, which is fine. There's this big debate going on, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Throughput is the same idea of how much work can get done in a period of time. And because we're talking about Scrum, the period of time would be a sprint. So how many product backlog items can get done in a sprint? That number is your throughput. We don't worry about the sizes. We just worry about the number of them. And we're going to use something called the one, two, three visual that I create and use in all of my trainings because it's a very easy, simple way of sharing how easy it is to get started with forecasting and the cone of uncertainty. Now, to help us along in how this translates to your product backlog refinement and talking to your stakeholders, we have our example product backlog here, numbered one through 15. We're gonna show how this overlays on top of it. So we have 14 sprints and we have a total product backlog of about 40 items that we might look into the future for. And our first sprint, we got one item done. So our throughput was one. The second sprint, we got three items done. So our cumulative throughput is now four. And in the third sprint, we got two done. So our cumulative throughput is now six. So that means our worst case was one, best case was three, and our average with those three points of data is two. So what we can do now is we can look ahead into the future. So when our stakeholder asks, okay, well, how much stuff can you get done by sprint seven? Or maybe they ask, well, when can you get all 15 done by? Well, we can try and answer that question by using that data and looking ahead with a cone of uncertainty. So let's start with the best case. We like to be optimistic after all. And let's draw out that line into the future. And it's looking a little bit something like that. Now, of course, we want to look at the worst case scenario as well. And let's draw that line out into the future. All right, there we go. And looking at this, we've got ourselves that cone, right? So that means the reality is probably somewhere in the middle. Now, if we want to look at where the average is going to be, eh, somewhere around here, right? Somewhere between those two lines is probably what's going to happen. So if we start with answering that question of how much do we think is going to get done by sprint seven? Well, let's look at what we've gotten. So over at sprint seven, somewhere between these two data points. So we can see here that that's probably around 10 items or 18 items. And if we look at, okay, well, how much or other when will we get 15 items done by. Well, looking again, 15, best case scenario, probably around sprint six, if we're very lucky. And if we're very unlucky, uh, probably somewhere around sprint 12. But now we can have conversations about that. We can check, okay, well, if we are gonna get anywhere from 10 to 18 done by sprint seven, and we've got six done now, which four are the most important? because those four are probably the ones we should put at the top here, right? They're most likely to get done. The next four, well, they're less likely to get done, but they're still, you know, reasonably based on our average going to get done. So we could make some rough plans for this, but we shouldn't really be promising anything on that. We can, we can you know, hope for the best kind of thing. And then we get into the next zone, which is, well, in the best case scenario, these four might get done, but it's looking very unlikely. And then we get into the area where we really want to be careful because even with our best results so far, this has never happened. And that's these three down here, which means we really don't want to be promising those three at all. Now, if that means that by sprint seven, 
number 14 actually has to happen. We've got an expo happening where this would really be good to be able to showcase to potential clients or customers. We probably want to reorder the product backlog accordingly and move 14 up into the guaranteed one, two, three, four. Whereas maybe number seven, actually that one's not so time sensitive. Yeah, we want to get it done, it's valuable, but it can wait until after sprint seven. So let's move it down further in the product backlog. And by using this way and overlaying it on a product backlog to look at what can we almost guarantee, almost, not definitely, what's likely to happen, what's best case scenario not so likely to happen, and what's definitely not gonna happen based on our current data, we can have some real powerful conversations with our stakeholders around what should happen next? Where is the value? Are we willing to take on this risk? Is this enough value to justify continuing work on this product? And it's an incredibly powerful tool. It is as simple as one, two, three. And if you use this, you will be able to have better quality conversations than you've ever had before with your stakeholders.